A little boy should know. It's all about the devil. I learned to hate him so. Well, you know what? I'll tell you right now, that was me as a kid. And I, I've still got to say, I appreciate my parents for teaching me good lessons. Because today, that's what you're going to learn too. People question God quite a bit and everything going on. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's no doubt that lesson is definitely true. That when it comes to the devil, well, guess what? You definitely don't trust him. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to look at some different ways that Jesus has authority over all creation, including Satan. That's right. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Mark 3, 20 through 30, that's where we're going to be reading. So you guys, if we can go ahead and read that, we'll start breaking it down. Mark chapter 3, verses 20 through 30. He came home. Again the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. All right. Well, like I said, we're going to break that down. And for those of you joining us now, my name is Will Mazingo. I am the founder of Truth Inspire. We are thankful for Soxty Baptist Church. They are a wonderful church. They actually shared some Bible study books with us so that we could get through this here online Bible study. Life Group's a wonderful thing. It's great to talk to one another and be there to pray with each other. So if you guys are looking for a home church, Soxty Baptist is a great place. They stream online, but also here at Truth Inspire, we do the online Bible study for that so that you guys can kind of pick up each week. I appreciate you being there. If you haven't shared it, please do. If you're not following, please do. And definitely please like because that helps bring more people. And of course, we like to answer questions like what we're going to today. The whole title of the message is questioned. Well, I can tell you something about that right off the bat. Whenever you start questioning everything and you start overanalyzing things, you start getting confused. Gee, there's that word. Confusion. Yep, you got it. Whenever you hear the word or feel like the word confusion is involved in any shape or form, I've got advice for you. And no, this isn't in any Sunday school book that we're reading from today. This is just a fact. It's helped me in my personal life, and I hope it helps you guys too. Confusion is of the devil. Just know that. Whenever you get confused, the first and best thing you can do is go to God in prayer. And just, if you don't know how to pray, I've said time and time again, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, we're taught about the Lord's Prayer. That's a great place to start. 
always go and pray because that's how you get to God and talk to him in Jesus' name. You're praying and he will solve the confusion. He will give you authority to cast away all that confusion and move forward and do everything that needs to be done because Jesus does indeed have the authority over all creation and that even includes the devil and that confusion. So just keep that. That's the answer. That's the best advice. If you don't get anything else from today's lesson, please know that confusions of the devil go to God. He has the answer and is the answer for everything and live in the proper life accordingly. You're going to get attacked by the devil on a regular basis, probably more so than normal because the devil's not going to just attack himself. He's not going to go after someone who's already in trouble. He's going to go after people getting in his way. Mm -hmm. Just like an opponent or something with a basketball team, they're not going to go scoring for the other team. They're going to instead be trying to score themselves, which, by the way, for scoring for yourself and your home team, you work together and you're probably going to get more points. The ones that go out there just trying to score themselves and do their own thing mess the team up more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all of this is coming together because if you don't put it together and you don't work together and you don't give it to God, you have the confusion and the confusion, like we said, is the devil. And you're starting to get all of that. It kind of comes together in everything that we're reading with these verses. I think you probably can kind of start to see that. It's very important. You guys getting that? Got it. All right. Get it. Got it. Good. I'll go with that. <laughs> Your memory verse this week is Mark 3.24. I want to spend some time on it, and then we'll break down these other verses just a little bit better. Um, it's really a good verse um, because it basically does what I was just talking about with the teens and about being divided and everything. So it, it says, And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. See, so that, that's a big deal. Um divided against itself well Jesus kind of explains that a kingdom or a house cannot survive if it's divided against itself and if Jesus was working alongside Satan to cast out demons then he would be there would be destruction of the own, his own kingdom and his own work right it wouldn't work Satan could not advance his evil agenda by removing evil from the situation or he would be doing God good, right? Right. No, he wants his way being done. That's right. And it, it just doesn't work. It would definitely not make sense. In fact, if you kind of dive in a little more, it turns into making Satan actually his own enemy rather than his own ally. And that just doesn't make sense. It, it really doesn't. So you kind of see this is really good, though, because by us looking at this, it breaks down a little more and it allows us to see that there is a God and there also he's addressing Satan. So we know there's a real devil because there's a conversation going on. And it looks to me like if you're sitting here and you divide it and you don't work together, in other words, you need to, once you're saved, continue to do God's will and work for God and see your life change and otherwise because you can't be evil and good you it just doesn't work that way it, you might want it to be where you like some old sins possibly but i'll tell you it, it doesn't work that way you become a different person because you want to please god and because it's the right thing to do and you see things where god's working on you you start to see things that are changed and you see things happening and you have to do it now talking about seeing things we're going to back up just a little bit because i tell you these verses that we're talking about jesus and having that authority over satan and everything when you're starting to look at those verses there's one more thing and it's looking at how jesus is talking to people to help them understand what he's doing is he likes to talk in parables. Talking in parables, you see, you get something. Mark is the one who kind of breaks this down. And where Jesus is talking back in chapter 2, he was talking about them. But it's like wisdom or teaching is what it is. In fact, it, it was usually confusing a lot of times. Um, a lot of people didn't understand it when someone would give a story. But then... 
you would come about and you would use it and once somebody understood what the story was used for or somebody explains the situation all of a sudden it makes that situation seem to make more sense mm -hmm. does that make sense a little bit mm -hmm. it, it's really something because jesus is definitely known in, with talking parables no doubt and i think that's important that we note that because right off the bat you see that on verse 23 that he was called and that's also how he's responding to these people who's actually calling him a devil and calling things going on that he's doing not right. Mm -hmm. Well, let them go ahead and do what they want to because in his growing popularity, the scribes, of course, seeing things that were going on, they didn't necessarily like the fact that he might have been getting more popular than them. And they also, a lot of people holding on to the old religion weren't accepting the new religion and that this was the Messiah. So you have a lot going on here and we got to watch out for that. Um, just a note, they did say Beelzebub. That is also what the Jews used as the name for Satan. So I want to make sure in case somebody didn't know that because that was in our verses. Mm -hmm. um, Prince of the Devils, that's basically going to be referring to the chief demon you know, which is Satan himself. Mm -hmm. um, having done that, I think it's only fun because this is something that I always found exciting. Cast out Satan. Well, let's talk about who he is a little more. We've already talked about the confusing and everything, but I think we need to take a moment to actually talk about him because in verse 23 where he says, cast him out, he's calling out Satan. So let's kind of look at that a little bit. If you're looking at this, you see that, um, like we said, if Satan's driving out demons of himself, then he's doing his own self harm, not good, right? Right. That's ridiculous, that whole idea. Right. So that's Mark's making sure that you understand that that doesn't make sense. You see how that's coming Nobody as smart as Satan would uh, threaten their own agenda by working against it. He's not stupid. <laughs> exactly. Which would sit right there and go right back to another thing, which is your memory verse divided against itself. Mm -hmm. You see, Satan could not advance his agenda again, like we said, if he was doing the work of God. It just doesn't make sense. So I, I tell you, we're looking at that. And the people who don't know who Satan is, well, let's have a little talk about that. Anybody want to tell about that? Who Satan is? Where did he come from? Where do we know about him? Anything about him? Satan, who most people know as Lucifer initially when he was in heaven, that was his name when he was an angel of God. And because of his pride, he fell. That's right. He did indeed. He, um, he rebelled against God's authority and he was cast out of heaven. Exactly. Exactly. And it... You know, it's still showing information on that. We see all that going on. It's important to understand that whenever you're reading and seeing things because that's where we see the judgment and what occurs. Um, Jesus is going to return with his power and one day fulfill eternal judgment of Satan and all the followers of Satan. And if you're not a follower of Christ, then you are a follower of Satan. Because there's not an in-between. You're, you're not going to be in-between. It's either you're evil or you're good. And I don't mean that good people and bad people, oh, well, since I'm a good person, I'm going to heaven. No, it doesn't quite work that way either. You have to believe in God. You have to say that sinner's prayer. Your life needs to change and you need to be of God to be able to get to heaven so your life has to change people have to notice you you need to be doing wills for god it's a big deal but this is really important because people don't seem to understand how complicated the devil makes things he will confuse everything everything was perfect in this world if we go into genesis and start reading and then all of a sudden because of one mistake everything is completely what the way it is today is certainly not heaven on earth, is it? No, we're walking in darkness. And, I mean, it will be reestablished. We can have faith in that as Christians. That's why I encourage people to believe in God and in Jesus, because without that, what do you have? You really have nothing. Right. It's very important to know that. And, I mean, it's, it's just something because if you give in to temptation or something, it's kind of like we were talking about with that t if a team or something was to score for the other team, mm -hmm. you're hurting your own self. Right. You don't, you don't need to be doing that. 
We want to work for God, which means that your life should be changing. So I'm going to encourage you guys this week to look at your life. Is there something not right in it? If there is, I want you to ask God in your private time to be able to help you with that so that he can help you. And you do that by asking for forgiveness. Like in verse 28, shall be forgiven. Did you see how that said that? Mm -hmm. Very important. Um, Jesus never hesitates to say that God forgives any and all sins. So you're never going too far, people. Blasphemy is the one that's the speaking evil against God is what that means in verse 28. A lot of people might not know that. Uh, against the Holy Ghost, well, we're talking about the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Well, it's unforgivable. And that's basically this, you know, people's got this thing with sin. They A lot of times you'll have people teaching the wrong things or they'll just flat out not want to accept God. And the unbelief will ultimately harden people's hearts towards God. At some point they get to the point where they become rebels. And they just don't even look for God anymore or have a desire to repent. So that's not good. And unfortunately, they cause problems. And guess what? The devil's not going to go get in their way because they're doing the devil's work at that point in time. Because if you're not doing good, well, then you're probably not exactly doing bad. But you may be helping by not doing what you could be doing for God. Mm -hmm. It's quite something. And the devil will... Will, will foul everything up. So don't listen to him. He's very confusing. If you get confused, say that sinner's prayer again if you have to and don't know it. Make sure you're right with God this week. Make sure you know who's in control. And if you got a sin that's over you, know that somebody could see you doing that. And if you're claiming to be a Christian, guess what you just did? That's making Christianity look bad. Not really. It's really you, but you know what I mean in the sense that we as Christians should be able to overcome sin. And if you got a problem about that, talk to people about it. There's people out there that are willing to pray for you and ask for help and stuff because guess what? You've never gone too far. It's one of those things we don't want to get into eternal damnation. That's a whole nother story. Right. Big. It's a big deal, isn't it? That's right. And um, God will never withdraw his offer for salvation. That being said, I want to because I know I'm kind of running short on time and I'm probably confusing people and we don't want to do that, right? Because confusion would be... Of the devil. Yeah, exactly. We're doing just the opposite. We want you to understand how to go up against him. So I want to put on here one more thing and that's really when you look at it that we, if we talk about Jesus as someone who was consistently... Well, what do you do if somebody just keeps rejecting him? Well, you pray for them. That's right. You can never pray too much for anyone or anything. And I have in my personal life seen people's lives change. From people who I didn't even know, like celebrities, mm -hmm. to people in my own family. I've seen them go. I've also seen them go the other way. But that's when you pray again because oftentimes God will bring them back to him. Mm -hmm. It's a real big deal. It really is. A person might want to refuse Jesus because they just don't know exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. A person may refuse God. So don't be heartbroken if somebody's rejecting you because you're a Christian. Instead, we do what we did at Chick-fil-A this week. I had a woman who was telling us about her family and how they had thrown her out because she basically, they don't have anything to do with her because she just will not go with this whole, all the modern day stuff we'll leave it at that because we don't want to cause an argument right now that's another day story by itself but the point is she's a christian and they do not accept christianity mm -hmm. what did we do right in the middle of chick-fil-a harry was with me what did we do we prayed with her we prayed for her family and we prayed with her and she was pretty happy about that. Gave her a cross. We prayed for her, and we're going to pray for lost souls today. In fact, I waited to pray today because I wanted to close in prayer to be for everything, to recap everything. So when we close in prayer, we're going to actually pray, like I just said. But as we pray, it's all one prayer today, and we're just going to recap very quickly because I think you guys will love this. It's, it's very important to know that we remind the group everybody's got to know. As long as you're living, you still have the opportunity to repent and turn from your sins. That's 1 John 1, nine. Read it real quick. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our, our sins and cleanse us from all iniquity. Wow. That's a big deal. You know why? Because 
once they die, they no longer have the opportunity. Jesus is providing a strong warning to even the scribes that they needed to repent while they still had the opportunity to do so. We don't know when you're going to draw that last breath. That's right. And I just want to testify for a second because I want to show everyone that when we were preparing for this Bible study, my Bible was already open up to that verse. And it's important because in the last two days I had a conversation with somebody and they were basically having an argument with me about someone else's salvation because it, we were talking about an atheist and they were saying, that they were already damned and that I shouldn't pray for that person. And and I pulled out some of these verses to point out to them, as long as they're still alive, God's mercy extends to them. There's still hope. There's still faith for anyone. Believers should not be surprised when others are skeptical about Jesus. Believers can trust that Jesus has authority over all creation. Believers should be heartbroken when people are rejecting Jesus and that's because we know about damnation right but don't let it overcome your own life instead pray that's, that's right. the answer to that that's word. right and let God handle it Lord Jesus we're coming to you in prayer right now Father in heaven I love you and I thank you for everything Lord I just ask right now I'm praying a little differently than normal because I know you're here and I know you're with us and I just want people to know that you're with them God, we're praying for lost souls right now. That's what we're praying for. People who are lost, people who are confused. Lord, we're praying that the devil is not in our way. That when he does get in our way, we cast him out of our way in Jesus' name. We even say in Jesus' name and ask for strength, energy, and guidance in Jesus' name. Lord, let us go and do your will, what you need us to do. God, we're asking help in, in our own lives to be able to do everything that you need us to do, that we clear anything that could block us from doing your will. Lord, I'm encouraging people this week to find someone and pray with them. I'm encouraging people to remember the sinner's prayer and say it with me if they need to. Just know that they can say, I believe in you, Jesus, that you died and you rose again on the third day. Forgive me for my sins. Lord, help change my life. I want to be a Christian. Lord, that prayer, let them say it. Let them know it. Let them turn to you. Lord, we believe in you. We give you all of our attention. And if something is blocking it, please let us recognize the confusion and cast Satan away and leave our lives the way they need to be with no questions about you and no questions about who has the answers being you with strength energy and guidance god please bless all the people who are sick and all the people who's having issues we have a couple of prayer requests or we please bless prayer warriors and please help all those people that are on there and everyone and anyone who is lost that's the big concern this week we're all praying that someone will come to know you and you use us in any way you need to to help bring people to you Again, thanking you for everything. In Jesus' name we always pray. Amen. That's Truth Inspired.